Hello everyone, my name is Angie Wynn. I'm here at Hope City Church and I am happy to announce we are launching the Well-Kept Woman campaign. In the next coming weeks, you will see testimonies, stories, riveting accounts of the lives of women who have gone through trauma, terrible situations, tough situations in their lives. But when all was said and done, they realized how they had been well kept by Father God. I'm so excited that these women have come forward to share their testimonies, and I'm also excited that you'll get a chance to hear them. We know and understand that Holy Spirit will work through these testimonies to do exceeding abundantly above all we could ask or think in the lives of our Facebook family and friends and any other listeners that will take a part in this campaign. So sit back, relax, get ready to receive, get ready to maybe shed a few tears, and get ready to rejoice with the women of the Well-Kept Woman campaign. We know that it will be life-changing. My name is Deborah Robinson, and I have been well-kept through domestic violence. When I met my ex-husband, I was still in high school. We dated for about five years before we married. And when I met him, I already had uh, heard rumors about how he was this big athlete, you know, and um, was really well known because of his skills. And, and I think when he noticed me, um, <clears throat> that made me feel special. We began spending time together and I would notice that he would get upset over minor things, things that to me were not that big of a deal. And he would um, lash out by saying things that I just wasn't used to hearing in my family. My family, thank God, um, never said and did things to one another. Um, that would be offensive or uh, critical to one another. That's just how I was raised. So that stood out to me when my ex-husband would do those things or say those things. And I would always try to make it better and say, oh, it's okay, it's not that big of a deal. And, and sometimes it would help, sometimes it would not. He had anger issues. He often talked about how his dad wasn't there for he and his siblings and that he never um, felt close to his dad even when he would come visit. He never, um, his dad never married his mom and he was upset over that. And so I knew there were some things that he was dealing with about um, being so upset over his, his father not being in his life. And I think it established insecurity uh, in a lot of areas in, in his life. So I tried to help him work through that, and I thought, oh, I'll just hang in here. It will get better. So I decided to marry him. He uh, proposed to me, and uh, we married, and we also had our first son the same year that we married. Um, things became, um, well, I'll be honest. At first, I, I felt like everything was okay and had maybe gotten some better. But then after about a year and a half, things uh, did change. And I, I could see the anger that was rising up in him again as before when we, when we dated. And unfortunately, um, he was so taken away with um, just other things, even with women. Uh, I would hear uh, that he would be out with other women when he was telling me he was going out with the guys. And over the years, it just got progress progressively worse, but um, I knew God was, was there. I, I felt his presence. Uh, in coping, I began to just let my son uh, play every sport there, there was for the season. I would. This, this was my coping mechanism. I would let him play whatever it was, basketball, football, soccer, he even played ice hockey. Uh, just whatever would, would 
you know, calls us to, to, to just have some time away, um, that's, that's what I would do. I even had my son in pageants. Uh, six years into the marriage, I had my second son. I did the same thing with him. I didn't turn to drugs or anything like that. Um, I just was consumed with, with my two sons. And it just was, I couldn't understand it because I never heard my, my dad call my mom out of her name, nor my grandparents. My grandfather never was disrespectful to my grandmother and it just wasn't anything I was used to. And this is what was happening to me. And it was really, just bizarre how he would be so angry and a lot of the abuse was verbal. A lot of the abuse was emotional. Uh, sometimes it was physical. When I wanted to defend myself, it would make him angry and then it would become physical. And I, I tried to stay in it because of my two sons, but then I know God was keeping me. He was showing me though that it wasn't healthy for them and I really needed to make some decisions uh, concerning whether I was going to stay or not. That's when I knew that he was really, really keeping me. I was feeling his peace. He was walking with me through it all. I felt a release after nine years um, that it was okay to get a divorce. It wasn't healthy for my children. And he actually gave me insight that he had a better life for me and my children because my ex-husband had showed me he wasn't going to change. Um, so I, we did divorce after uh, close to 10 years. And the Lord just began um, just helping me heal I decided to go back to school because I thought, you know what, it's just going to be me and these boys and I've got to be mom and dad and make a good life for them. And I, I guess, stayed single for several years, maybe about six years, and, and um, met up with a, a friend who I knew years before. And he um, was, kind of witty, but he was goofy, had little glasses, and I'm telling you, little did I know that almost 30 years down the road, this little guy would be my new husband. So God just redeemed the time. Um, after about six years, my son was enrolled at the school where um, my now husband's mom was the head secretary. And she would tell me, guess who um, is back in town? My now husband actually had went through a horrible divorce, um, had actually lost a, a son, a young son, and he had been through so much. But he had moved back home, and we reunited. And we fell in love. My children fell in love with him. He's been the greatest dad. We've been married now for about 17 years and God has redeemed the time. He has kept me. He has kept my family. He's protected my mind. He has just, there's just no words. He's kept my mind. He's kept me sane and he's just protected me and my family. And, and I'm telling you, he will keep you. You have to learn to trust him, even through the pain. The scripture says that many are the afflictions of the righteous, but he will deliver you out of all of them. And I'm so glad to know that, I think it's Haggai that talks about your uh, latter days will be greater, you know, than, than the former days. And that is so true. But God is so good and he will keep you. He will keep you in perfect peace, but the key is learning to just depend on Him and trust Him even through the pain. Romans 8.28 tells us that He has a plan for us and it will work out for our good if, because when we are called and we are, uh, He has a purpose for us, we love Him. It says when you are called, when you love Him, and he calls you, 
that plan will work out and then he gets the glory. That's what we want. We want him to get the glory. He will keep you. And I'm telling you, he will redeem the time, the pain, the hurt. There were times that I felt so hopeless. I thought, Lord, how will I get out of this? I had his love. I had his peace. I felt it. But it's, I, there were times I felt so hopeless. And, um, but I, I just um, continued to pray when I seen no way, when it seemed to be worse, I kept trusting him and loving on him. And I felt his comfort and he literally guided me through it all. That's what it means to be well kept. I'm telling you, he will keep you.